Hi, this uh, tutorial is in support of your casting exercise which you're undertaking at the moment. So here's, a, here's a, a, an image of a, a chopped through cast model. So this is our 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters uh, uh, zone that we're working in. And what we're going to do is draw this into Rhino and create the first solid model in Rhino. And then we're going to see what we can do as far as extracting 2D information from within Rhino. So look at look at this, the way we've got this kind of 10 millimeter zone around, that's kind of going to be our first first visit to the to the drawing. So we want to start a new drawing in Rhino and just use the use the correct template. So file, new, and we'll go for a small object millimeters. And that sets a, a low kind of accuracy tolerance. Okay, we want to uh, set up the grid. We've got a pretty expansive work area here, so we can make things a bit smaller and change the snap settings at the same time. So the command would be units. Okay, so type in units and return. Check the grid. We'll reduce the grid count. 40, minor grid line every 10 millimeters, major every 10, and a snap spacing of 10. So I'm just going to keep it really simple to do this drawing. Okay, in the top viewport, I'm going to make that my current full view, zooming out until I can see two major grid lines. Okay, I'm just going to use the default layer here, just so that the, the black lines stand out and will get caught by the screen capture properly. Okay, so I'm going to use the rectangle tool, and notice it's showing you which button you should press on the mouse when you go hover over. So for rectangle, you've only got one option, it's a left click, but something for lot like line, you've got two options, left click or right click, it gives you a different command. Okay. Before we start drawing, actually, we need to make sure that we're going to snap onto the grid here. Uh, I won't necessarily need ortho on, but I will need the object snaps activated, and I'm going to use endpoint, midpoint, intersection, and perpendicular. Okay, back to the rectangle. Okay, just be patient and make sure you're, you're snapping onto the, the grid. Okay, so we'll start in this bottom corner, sorry, where the axes meet at zero, zero, and take that up, and look at, keep your eye on the bottom left corner, because it tells you the size of the, the objects that you're creating. Okay, so we can tell, tell there that it's a 200 by 200 rectangle. Okay, and we'll bring this in by 10 millimeters, so the command is offset. So you just start typing the command, and it will offer you the, the most obvious commands tell it the distance we want. I want 10. Enter. And then you pick the shape to offset. In Rhino, everything is a curve. Okay, A line is just a curve without curvature. So pick the object. Decide on the direction you want to offset. So this time it will be inwards. And click again. Okay, Now individual lines. So we're right clicking the line command and I'm going to come in two squares above the the kind of middle axis here okay so we're inputting the we're trying to input the plan of our shape okay so that first line I've drawn here first proper line okay is effectively us coming in to the tunnel okay we're then going to draw down from the top wall Okay, so we're coming down here now, another single line, just pull it down and enter to finish, and then we want to join these two together with a curve. Okay, so you see the curve is here. So we want to fillet those, so the fillet command sitting just here, we need to tell it the radius we want to use and we'll make this nice and clean, let's make it 40 millimeters 
and then it says select the curves to fill it. So first curve and then second curve. It's nice and clean. Okay. We can't really tell what's happening around the corner here. It could be curved, it could be angular in the corner, but I'm going to make it curved just to give things a bit more a bit more interest. Okay, so back of Rhino, we want to end up with a curve here, so we'll need a line first drawn on top of this. So right click, single line, enter, then we're filleting again. Different radius though, just 20 this time, enter, and when I pick here, because there's two objects in the same space, it gives me an option. I can select either that line or this one. Okay, and then the second curve, and we're joined on. Okay, the last line to draw here is just down the back of the shape. Enter to finish. Okay, then this rectangle has done its job. We don't need no don't need to see that anymore. So I'm just selecting that, press the delete key. Okay, now what I want to do is flip this over to give us a symmetrical arrangement. So the command is mirror, and it's not sitting obviously in view here, so I'm just going to type in the command mirror. Okay, a selection from left to right will give me a kind of a soft window. Okay, enter, don't want to mirror anything else. And then it's just a case of picking two grid points or midpoint to midpoint, which is probably more definite. Okay, now you need closed shapes for to create extrusions. Okay, so at the moment this is spoiling our closed shape, so we need to trim that out. So trim, pick the two shapes and return. And we want to lop out just there. Okay, let's escape. Now do you notice as I've been filleting and joining these have been actually joined on and that was a, a sub option of the, of the fillet command. So you can see here the join was set to yes. Okay, but we haven't got the the other parts of the shape joined on so we need to use the join command instead so let's pick this shape and then we can add on add on add on and the flash gives you the clue that you've created a closed shape so four, jo four curves joined into one closed curve so that's nice and definite just click on that just to test it it's looking good Okay, so that's the, the plan shape we've, we've created. Okay, so we've got this kind of kind of T shape that we've got. Uh, we now need to look at the side view. So some of this is fairly similar. So we've got the kind of a line representing a tunnel. We've got a fillet here up to the vertical. But then we've got this diagonal, which causes a bit more work. And basically, if we took a line coming from the very corner inwards at 30 degrees, offset that to two sides that will give us the opening shape that we need okay so in Rhino we don't want to be working in the top view for this we want to be working in a plane that is vertical to this line okay so that would be our front viewport so double click the word top double click front okay zoom out the two squares again two large squares. Okay, so here's my two large squares. And you can see the, the red axis is darkened a bit in this area because that's where my line work is that's going backwards. That's where my plan is going backwards. So let's start off with a rectangle again. Go from the origin point here up to 200, 200. Let's just make sure that's in the same pl in the right plane. So we'll check our perspective view. Okay, rolling out, and with the perspective view, if you hold shift and your right mouse button, 
you can pan. Right mouse button on its own is orbit. Okay, so the object we just drew is in the right plane, it's vertical, so we can continue in the front viewport quite safely. Okay, so firstly, we'll set up the 10 millimeter offset. Okay, so remember the distance 10, so we don't need to type that in again. Just pick the object, go inwards and pick again. Okay, now we want a line for the tunnel, so right click your line command. And this time we're coming in five grid lines up. So this would be this position. So it's five grid lines up from the floor of the model. Okay, so we'll come in by 80 again and enter and we'll bring the line down two units past the midpoint okay so this would line up then with what's happening on the plan okay so I'll bring that down enter to finish then fill it those two together with the same radius so it was 40 for the big radius okay can you see here we've got join I'm going to take that off to show you the kind of long-winded way. So we'll take join off and pick these two. Okay, so these are individual lines still. They're not joined together. <coughs> okay, up in the top corner here, we've got the uh, the angled line to put in. Okay, so we can start the line at this point, and we've got some options here. Uh, if I type at say 500 and then the angle symbol and minus 30 then press enter okay so I've got a long line 500 millimeters at 30 degrees okay now do you notice that actually goes through if we if I counted down four and across seven it actually gives you that point so we could have done that by just drawing to that grid position and that's 30 degrees as well exactly I did have to check that a few times to make sure okay so we'll offset this line out the way by five millimeters so the distance wants to be five enter pick this line go outwards okay press enter to bring back the command pick this line go inwards Okay, this line's done its job, that can be deleted. Okay, we need to fill it this one to this one with a radius of zero. So fill it radius zero this time. Okay, so pick here and here. So it lops off the bit we don't need. And then we can tidy up in this area. We'd be using trim for this. Okay pick both of these objects as trimmers and enter and we want to lose this bit this bit and this bit okay let's escape there's a bit of line over here this for the bin as well okay so that should be the 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 shapes we need here okay let's keep this just for a second okay keep that maintain that for now uh, what we do need though is individual lines here and here. So right click on your line command, we need the line there, and then keep that going down to here. Enter to stop. Okay, so we've got a line there and a line here. So we want to join those to the rest of this shape, and as long as things have been drawn correctly, they should all join up correctly. So join. Let's start with this one, okay, and then add another line, another line, these are a bit easier to collect, select, and it flashed, six curves joined into one closed curve. Just check that, good, okay, so that's shape number two, okay, shape number three is a very small shape up here. Okay, so this is going to create a slot along the top. So we need a polyline up here instead. 
Okay, so this is going to be a subtracting shape. So I'm going to start here. So it's one, two, and we want the end point. So we'll zoom in here. I'm looking for the end of that line. Okay, end point, end point. I'll come back to where I started and it closes the shape automatically. So we've created that shape in the top corner and that's going to create the a slot, it's like a, as if you can imagine putting a, a letter in there, it's you know, like a post box slot. Okay, and the final shape we need will be a base. Okay, because if, if we don't put a, a flat base underneath it, <coughs> you're basically going to fall through the plan. So have a look at the plan. Okay, so this <coughs> excuse me. This shape occurs 10 millimeters above the floor. Okay, so let's just draw this in in the perspective view first. Okay, so this item wants to be 10 millimeters higher. Okay, so we want to move click this shape enter. We want to move it vertically. So change vertical to yes. Okay, you can zoom in closer and this will use the grid but it will use it kind of invisibly. So pick a grid point and then move upwards and it's snapping to the vertical 10 millimeters. You can see in just below, just down here, look for the distance that it's moving. 10 millimeters. Okay. Now draw another square underneath that. Okay, and that one's going to thicken to become the base of the model. Okay, these two squares that are vertical aren't needed anymore. They can be deleted. And that leaves us our four shapes. The only tweak we need to do now is to move this little shape upwards by 10 millimeters, so it's going to go northwards. So easier to do that in the plan view, in the top view. So we'll go back to the top view. Okay, the object is sitting just here. So we move, grab this area, it's found the small polyline, press enter. Base point can be anywhere, just move up one grid point. And that's us now ready to do the extrusion part of the, the process. So we'll, we'll stop this video just now and we'll pick up again ready to do the extrusions.